Okay, so I'm going to go over sort of the basics of how I made a climbing system. I'm going to start by making a blueprint actor, and we'll just call it climbable. And then we'll make things like ledges and ladders inherit from this. This needs a spline. Then in our construction script, we'll take the spline, get the number of points, going to subtract two from it so we don't count the beginning and end points. Oops. Okay, then we'll do a for loop from zero to this. Add spline mesh component. Then we'll just promote this to a variable so we can keep track of it. Spline mesh component. Then we want to set static mesh. Uh, since this is our base class that we're going to take other things from and make this into a variable so we can change it in different versions of this blueprint. So we'll just call this Spline Mesh. Okay, now we can grab that component that we made and set relative scale 3D. Okay, this we will make into a variable as well. Now we're going to set forward axis. This is just because you might not want them all to stretch along the same axis depending on how you made them and which way they're facing. So just do this just in case promote to variable. Forward axis. So then you can change that on each version of your blueprint as well. Let's set collision enabled to Aquarian physics because we want our character to be able to collide with it or to uh, trigger an event when it hits it at least. So we can, so this is a mess, but Response to channel. Let's see, on visibility, we want it to block that. So, pawn overlap, because we're going to trigger an overlap event. Okay, we want to attach it to component. We actually don't set the parent because the parent is just herself here. And then we need to set start and end. And we have to calculate that. So pretty much what this is doing is it's going through each of the spline points and making a mesh that goes between them and then stretching it out to fit the space between the two spline points. So we need to take this index. I'm actually just going to say this is a local variable. Make it a bit cleaner. Call it current index. Really 
here. Get our spline. Get location and get our spline. Get location and tangent spline point. This one we want in local space. And we want this again. Our spline, and then we add one so we can get the current spline point and then the next spline point along the line. And then each of these just plug into start. Start. End and end. So now this should be able to generate something for us if we set these variables. So if I set the spline match to just be the basic cube. It's kind of a little scene. I'm missing something here. Okay, so I just forgot to set the relative scale to something besides zero. But then we've got ourselves a spline mesh. So now you can. Move it around, do whatever, gotta mesh the balls it. So we're just using the actor's overlap event here. And then get player character. It's equal. All right, I have this split into a lot of pieces in the original, but I'm gonna keep this one simpler. So for now, we're just gonna stick with this climbable actor that's gonna be acting as a ledge pretty much right now. So, first of all, if you mess with this relative scale, you get things like this, so you can change your shape, to make it more what you want. We're going to get our movement from our player character and set the movement mode to flying. So this way we'll just be suspended in the air and don't have to worry about gravity. We will also set our velocity to zero. So this part would be relevant to grabbing anything. And then the next part is more relevant to grabbing a ledge. If you were doing something like a ladder, you'd want to change uh, these horizontal measurements we'll be using to vertical. We're going to get a reference of self, get the horizontal distance from that to our player character. And then with that value, we use this distance to get rotation at distance along spline in world coordinate space. So we want to split that. And then we'll just make a temporary error pull. Climb rotation. Make that a rotator. Set it 
split it because we just want to set the Z value. And we want to take our same spline, get location and distance. Use this same horizontal distance value. So this is good for something sideways like a ledge. If I was making something like a ladder, then I'd probably want vertical distance instead of horizontal. I want to get this player character again and get actor forward vector so you know which way the player is facing. Split that. Want to subtract this. Split again. And then you might need some offset values for the X and Y. You can add them in here. And then for the Z, you might have to change this by multiplied by negative 70. Just to get the rotation right, or the location, I guess this would be for the height. I will set our climb destination. Make that a vector. Set this. You can also split these here and add any offsets that you need. But I'll just keep it plain for now. Okay, so get player character, get actor location. Then we're going to make another variable and call it. So in this original one, I set a variable called climb moving and stuff, and then I think I updated the location on tick, things like that. But since this is all in a blueprint, this time I'm actually going to make a timeline. <clears throat> we'll call it grab time. This is just to get a smooth movement from where the character is to where they will be grabbing onto the ledge. So it doesn't, uh, so they don't just teleport there. So we'll make it short, like a second. That might be a little bit long, but then we can see what we're doing. And one, one. And then we want to lerp vector. Use this as our alpha. Then we can use our start location and climb destination. Oh, we also need a start rotation. Consistent here with the name called this destination as well, but oh well. So get player character again, set actor transform if you have a weird scale, just make sure to change that to what it needs to be and then. I want to rip rotator. Start rotation. Climb rotation. Choose path, yes. If you don't do that, you can get some weird stuff. Now, if we grab. 
Well, it did something, but that location was way off, so I've got to figure out what's wrong here. Oh, look at that. Location was set to local, not world. Oop. Okay, this is interesting now. It's moving but not staying. Okay, first of all, I'll do play from start because I don't reset like it should. Oh, and I set the movement mode to falling, which I meant to do flying, so that would of course cause problems. Oop. Made this a little too high, but. Okay, so now our person is going somewhere and getting in flying mode. Which is exactly what we were looking for. Or not going at all where we want, but. So. We can mess with that. Using these offsets and such. Get rid of the C one. Okay, now he's turned completely sideways to what we want. So, all right, so we're gonna take the rotation and try subtracting from it. So now our climb rotation. Ah, so you know we're facing forwards towards the ledge. Now I'm going to multiply X and the Y here because they're both he's ending up very far forward. So this is the value I originally used was 25. Let's see how that looks. <laughs> Not great. So we're gonna stick with 60, 60 here. The reason I'm using these multiplies here instead of adding later is if I added then it would be dependent on which way I was rotated in, in the world at the moment, so it would act really weird. Yay. Okay, now we're facing the ledge. But with Z, it's always going to be the same in the world, so you can just manually subtract or add to the, v the Z value. <laughs> So we're going to subtract a lot here, because he's sitting pretty high. <laughs> I was thinking about his head, but pretty much you, you know, you adjust this how, however it would look good with your animations. Now this next piece we do want separate, because we're going to make a blueprint class again, just another actor. I'm going to call this one Climbing Movement. And we're going to go to the class defaults up here. And on auto receive input, put player zero or whichever one you need. We're going to take our move right input. And we're going to keep this on consume input. So this way, when we spawn this class, it will take over our movement. And now, when we're all done moving here, and I'm going to shorten the time because it's kind of long and annoying right now. When we're finished, we want to spawn actor from class. Going to call this class. Uh, I mean, <laughs> going to spawn the climbing movement actor. Uh, it doesn't matter where it goes or anything because it's just. Uh, well, it wants this to be set anyways. There we go. Because uh, this actor is just for receiving and dealing with input. And you don't have to do it this way. You could just. Uh, 
put maybe a bull in your character that says, I'm climbing this right now, and so treat my input this way. You know, that's up to you. Okay, so when we get right side input, we're going to uh, let's save this. as right input raw because we're gonna do a bunch of stuff with this because uh, depending on which way your camera's facing you might want the character to respond differently to the direction controls that you give it i actually input access forward then i also save Or input raw. Then I made a separate function called climb move. And I call that after each of these. So I get my right input raw. Or input raw. And I make a vector. Multiply this. And give it one. Rotate it. I need to split this. Now this is the part where we take the camera into account. Get player, controller. Get control. Rotation. Split that. And we're also going to need a variable, a variable called current spline. Make that a line component object and then we want to expose this on spawn so when we go here I might have to redo that call this again spawn actor from class climbing movement Okay, we also have to send this as instance editable. Ed editable. Go here. So this is something else. Okay, climbing movement. Now we have our current spline here, so we can take this, and then it will have access to that information. Well, as soon as we split that again. Okay. So, we want our current spline, get rotation, at distance, get horizontal distance to, get player character, get current spline, I'm just kidding, we need the actor apparently. What we're actually going to do is go in this climbable one. And we're going to save this variable. When we get the horizontal distance, and we'll call it distance along edge. And then we will add that in here as well. Distance along edge, make it into a float. And then make it editable and expose on spawn. Get just back again. Climbing. Okay. Now we can pass that variable. edge there, change this to world. Subtract 
subtract from our Z rotation. Split this. And rotate our vector. I split this. And we're going to clamp the Y value between negative 1 and 1. Then multiply by negative 1. And all that <laughs> gives us our new right input that local variable. So we'll call that one just plain old right input. Now get the player character. Get actor forward vector. Promote it to a local variable. And just call it forward. Now get current spline, number of spline points, subtract one, get distance on the spline, that's one point, and set this to max distance. So this is pretty much just telling us how far we can move along the spline. Here in the original one I had a little switch for different types of climbing. So if you have multiple types you can do that. But since we're just doing ledge climbing here, we'll just go to the next part. Get a right input and multiply that. And we would have a speed of movement here. I had it at two. You can set this to variables. You can change it or whatever. We'll just do two for now. Get our distance along the ledge and add it to our speed. Now we're going to make another local variable and just call it unclamped. Because we got to do some stuff to check this before we use it. We'll clamp this value with a minimum of, and I'm going to say 25 because that's what I was using. That's just saying how close to the minimum edge of the spline you can get. So again, you just adjust according to how your animations look and stuff. 25, so we'll use for now. Then we'll get our max distance. And subtract the same value from it. So we don't do go too close to the maximum edge either. And now we can finally set our distance along edge to the new value. Now get the unclamped. Check if it's less. Then the distance along edge. greater than this max distance we calculated. And then we'll make an OR here. So if it's either of these, branch. This uh, might not be so relevant here because I think this is for 
animations uh, to stop animations when you were on the edge. Stuff like that that will be important once you're animating your person. So we're just showing they're on the edge and they're not. Now if they're not, we are going to do more stuff. So we'll get the current spline again, get the distance along the edge. Oops. <laughs> okay, we want this some world space. Subtract vector. Split this. And we want our forward vector from the player that we got earlier. Multiply it by 25, it's that same edge offset value. So x, y, And Z, I'm just going to put straight in there because I didn't change the value this time, but you can change that however you need to. We're going to make a climb destination that is a vector. Let's set that. We'll go X, Y, and I believe uh, before I did negative 90 when I was uh, first making the character grab this thing. Let's see, negative 90, yes. So we'll want to use the same value here, whatever you use. D. Then we'll get our play character again. Location and make a new one called start location. Set that here, and then we're going to make a bool called climb moving. This one we will uh, just lerp the movement on tick, at least for now, because. Uh, we just want it to consistently be updating whenever we're moving and stuff, and that might get a little messy with the timeline. Get our current spine. This is the edge. Get the rotation. In world space. Let's see what our offset was here. Also 90, okay. So we want to split that and climb rotation. Make a rotator. We'll set that and subtract so that we're facing the way we want. So a variable called climb rotating. An event graph on tick. Going to add a function called climb move tick. And we're going to call that Give it an input. Level float. Delta seconds. Now we want. 
want to get our player character. Get our target location. We're going to make a local variable called current location. That we will set it to. I'm moving. We're going to get our current location, our climb destination, our delta time. See, so just type delta time. It should. That's weird. Oh, delta seconds. I don't know why I call it delta seconds. And we're going to do a V interp too. You could use some other interpolation method, like a lerp or something if you like that better. I don't remember why I chose this one, but it seems to work. So call this new location. Get our player character again. And set actor location to the new location. Now we're gonna do some weird stuff with this. Use our new location and our start location. Those subtract subtract the x values and the y values. And the z's. Power. <laughs> get the square. There we go. And then add all three together. Make this a local variable. Oh, nope. Local variable. Called. distance it's less than point one we set climb moving to false now for the rotating part. So pretty much if it's false here, we skip that step and go to the rotating. And if it was false way back here, we just skip to this check where we see if we want to rotate. Character again, get actor rotation, do R interp to get climb rotation, delta seconds, make it a local variable, call it new rotation. Again, 
on set actor rotation to the new. Uh, at the beginning here, we also needed to set actor rotation and make a local variable called current rotation. So I'm going to get this, split it, I'll subtract on x, Oop. y, and z. And Z. There we go. Take the absolute of each of these. And get less than one one. Pretty much I'm just trying to prevent this thing from continuously trying to move or rotate the character when it doesn't need to. Rotations are less than 0.1 away from where they should be. Then we'll stop rotating. Let's see what I did. I cannot find. Okay. Just had to update to the new version. And now we should be able to move along the ledge. Let's see. Okay, first of all, after we grab, I've got this whole thing here setting the character movement velocity to zero, but we actually need that again here because it's getting moved by this timeline and then uh, it keeps moving. So we don't want that. Now let's make sure also that we're actually getting input when we try to move. <laughs> He's rotating, he shouldn't be doing that. See what the raw input looks like. Need one, one. So that is working properly. But something else is going wrong. Oh, you know what? I forgot to set climb moving. That's kind of important. Now we can fall along the ledge and it reacts to the rotation of the camera. And you can even use forward and back keys if you're facing sideways. Now we can move along the ledge and it stops before he goes too far. So now we just need a way to exit. So I'm going to say we receive a jump in action. I also want to consume that input. Then we want to get our player character, get our movements. And set movement mode to 
to falling. And destroy ourselves so that the player will have control again. So here we are. Now we can jump and we're free. Put it on the ledge. Within ourselves. So to summarize, there is a climbable actor and this uh, uses a spline and then generates spline meshes along the length of it to make something like this ledge here. And then we set it to overlap with the player so we can trigger events when the player runs into it. So with that overlap event, check this player, set the player to flying, move them up to a line with the ledge using the location and rotation at the distance along the spline. Use the horizontal distance to get that. So we're just checking, uh, pretty much finding the closest point on the spline or the closest distance along the spline to the player. So then that, and then we spawn this climbing movement actor that is set to interact with the player and its movement events are sent to consume input so it pretty much it'll take over from your character's movement so that you won't be trying to run around at the same time you're trying to move along the ledge. And then we use these climb move events, we just set these raw inputs, use this climb move event and we calculate our right input according to like which way our camera's angled and stuff so we can flip it if we're looking the other way and then we get how far we can move and then we add some movement, add some location and get the new distance along the spline the new location of the distance along the spline set climb moving or climb rotating to true so that in this tick event we can then use that to interpolate to a new location. And you can set these speeds to whatever you want, whatever works for you. And yeah, that sums it up. I hope that makes it a bit clearer. It's kind of a weird setup, so. And I guess the only other thing I would say is uh, there were a lot of other things added in this other project, so I'll show it real quick here. For instance, uh, this ledge blueprint that's, or we can go to the original climbable, actually. That would be simpler. So this original climbable object, it also had these overlap boxes. Uh, pretty much I would spawn those on the beginning and end points. And then sometimes I would manually adjust where they were, but I could use them to overlap on corners and stuff, like you can see here. So you can see I made this one stick out on the edge here, and here, here, and here. So pretty much when you were going along a corner, you would hit the overlap box for this, and so it would make you move to this ledge. And all that, because if I... Uh, didn't do that you would just stop here and you would never touch that ledge so you'd never grab onto it so these overlap boxes are a way of uh, making something that the player could touch to move to a new ledge uh, let me show that here so move and it hits that overlap box so he moves to the next ledge uh, I also made some variables in things like ledges that said uh, it said things like can be grabbed and I would set that to false until the player has until you know like so many 0.5 seconds or something after the player let go so that 
if my player did, for instance, go from one corner to a new ledge, they wouldn't re-grab their own ledge while they were moving. So it would stop like a crazy glitching back and forth or stuff like that. I also made this climbing interface just so that I could call events on the player themselves. Of course, if this is your game, you could just uh, call the player directly too, because I was, I was just trying to make this flexible so other people could call on their players. But that's only if you want certain events to be called on your player when they start climbing. And then also for the uh, leaving the ledge, instead of just dropping like I did here, I added an impulse so that they would actually jump in the direction you were moving your arrow keys or whatever when you left the ledge so you could jump up or sideways or... and that's also dependent on having that bull so that your character doesn't, doesn't grab right back onto the ledge as soon as you let go. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions? Just ask.